Hi everyone, this is the first video for the first lesson of partial fractions. There. Um, <laughs> so just as a starter, he asks you to combine these as single fractions. So you'd want a common denominator, which would be the bottom line. In fact, you should be able to do this one really. Oh my little lonesome. Some... Oops, that's a one. That's a good start. So you do that. Let's have a look what this one's done. Hopefully you've got that there. And then there's another example where it's actually to combine these. But if you look, it's a little bit sneaky in the fact that that is a, is a multiple factor, whatever you want to call it. There's a factor of it, and it kind of fits within it. So in terms of your common denominator, because that bit goes in there, it's just x, x minus 2 all squared. And then you look at the top and you say, what bit am I missing? So I've got an x minus 2 squared here on the bottom, so I'm missing the x, so that would be a 2x. I've got an x on the bottom of the second term, so I'm missing the x minus 2 squared. And then for the x minus 2 fraction, I'm missing an x. So look at the bottom, compare the bottom to the bottom. I'm missing an x and an x minus 2. So you have to be careful when you create the top line. This actually helps with some of do later, but there you go. So let's have a look, see if they've done it the same as me. Yeah, see? So the x minus 2 fits into the x minus 2 squared. Uh, and you get that. So hopefully you're okay with that. That's combining the fractions. What we want to do is to reverse it. We want to split it up. We have two main reasons for that. One is binomial approximations. One is integrating. Both of which you'll do next year. But with our reverse process is called partial fractions. And we can either split it into, so kind of going backwards from that, we can split it into that for binomial approximations, or integrating to form logs. Or we can start off with that. Let me just remove this bit of writing here. And I can go back to there. So that's what partial fractions is. It's just going back from something which is joined together and splitting it up so we can do something. Right. So it says here, so the denominator must be um, factorised. There. Okay. And it can be applied to proper fractions. We'll talk more about that in the next lesson because it's one of the improper ones that we do. Right, so I need to factorise it first. So this is going to be the same as x plus 4 over, so if I factorise it, it's going to be a 1 minus 2x and a 1 plus x. There. I know that because I just copied from the answers. Now, each of these, these are linear, these are like linear brackets, linear factors. So I've got linear, no. so I've got two linear factors here. Each of these gets its own little fraction. So each linear Oh, can't spell fraction. It's a Wednesday morning, it's 7.44, and already can't deal with the day. Uh, two linear factors, each linear factor. You can read my writing. That's its own fraction. So I've got something over a 1 minus 2x, and I've got something over a 1 plus x. I don't know the constants, so I give them a and b, and c, and d, and e, and f, however many there are. So that's my me setting it up now as a partial fraction. So now I need to solve it. So what I do is I multiply... by the common denominator. Now your common denominator is that bit there. 
I'm going to do it in full, um, but you can take a shortcut. So if I multiply through by the yeah, 1 minus 2x and the 1 plus x, it leaves me an x plus 4 on that left hand side. I've got an a over 1 minus 2x, so that gets multiplied by 1 minus 2x, 1 plus x. And then I've got b over 1 plus x, and that gets multiplied by 1 minus 2x, 1 plus x. And then I cancel. If you look, 1 minus 2x's have cancelled from the first bit. So I've got an x plus 4 is a lot of 1 plus x. And the 1 plus x cancels on that one. So I get b lots of 1 minus 2x. Now I don't need to physically write down the multiplying through. What I tend to do is look at the common denominator and see what's missing. So I look at, I kind of just compare um, and look what's missing. So on the first fraction, I've got the 1 minus 2x, I'm missing the 1 plus x. So I put a 1 plus x next to it. On the second fraction, on the b fraction, I'm missing from the common denominator the 1 minus 2x. So I put a 1 minus 2x next to it. And that's nicely set up now. I've got a couple of method marks on the way. Right, so now what I need to do is choose numbers which make the brackets equal to zero. So if you look, I mean, it should be moderately straightforward with this one. So if I think that 1 plus x is 0, then I'm going to try x is minus 1. If I think that 1 minus 2x is 0, if I take the 2x over and then divide through, I've got x is a half. So I'm going to try x is minus 1. So it'll give me minus 1 plus 4, which is 3, and it'll give me a lots of 1 plus a minus 1, so that bit disappears, plus a b lots of 1 minus 2 lots of minus 1. So I've got a 3 there, so I've got 3b, 1 is b. So I've tried x is minus 1, so now I'm going to try x is a half. So I've got a half plus 4, that's 4 and a half, so 9 over 2, is a lots of 1 plus a half, so that's going to be 3 over 2a, plus b lots of 1 minus 2 lots of a half, which is 0. So this bit here becomes 0, that bit there becomes 0. Uh, multiply through by 2 over 3, it gives me 3 for n. And I've found it, so what I want to do then is just rewrite the question now. So I've got the constants. So just write it out again. So the question was for, what was it for? So x plus 4 over 1 minus x minus 2x squared is, so a is 3, and that was over the first fraction, which is 1 minus 2x. b is 1, which is over the second fraction, which is 1 plus x. There. So that's the first example at the bottom of your page two. Uh, there's a question for you on the top of the next page, so have a go at that. Um, I'll reveal it, and then we'll have another video. There you go.